boss battles. They are an integral part of games, mainly used to test what you learned, change up the gameplay loop, advance the narrative, none, or all of these. Not every game has or needs them, but they almost always make a game better. Could you imagine if something like Papers, Please had a boss fight? <laughs> I just wanted to talk about some boss fights. Some good, some bad, and some for some completely arbitrary reasons. Also, there will be spoilers, but I'll let you know beforehand. So don't say I didn't warn you. His final boss is my tendonitis. Ah, this was a failure. Portal and Portal 2's final bosses are both pretty good at keeping the mechanics and style of the game while staying true to what the game is, as well as being thematically appropriate. You, as Chell, go through all these chess chambers to get your promised cake, and GLaDOS tells you, Hey, you want cake, fatty? Just go down here, and just kidding, it's actually fire. You escape, and now you have a motive for killing her. You get to GLaDOS, and the fight is essentially just another test chamber. You have to line up the rockets to your portal, and have them hit GLaDOS, where then you have to push the button, and cast her cores into the fiery pits of hell. It's using your knowledge of the rockets and the portals to beat her, while also testing your speed with the button. Portal 2's final boss is pretty similar. You, as Shell, go through all these test chambers, but this time, you already have a motive to replace GLaDOS with Wheatley. However, when you actually succeed, Wheatley says, Right, hey, you, you wanna go up to the surface, okay? Just go up here and just kidding, go straight to hell. Now you have a new motive, to kill Wheatley. You make it back to Wheatley, and the fight is essentially just another test chamber, only it's a little different from the first fight. You now have to stun Mr. British Man with bombs so you can attach corrupt cores to put GLaDOS back in charge. Both of these fights are good at staying true to the style of the game they are, while still changing it up and being good narratively. But Portal 2's boss fight is better than Portal 1's in my opinion. What really makes it better is the setup for the fight, where you and GLaDOS bonds and become best friends for however long it's convenient. It makes the context for the fight even better, it makes the ending even better. Overall, it's a good ending to a good game. Play Portal 2, please. Chess's final boss is my IQ. Ah. Now, stop me if you've heard this one before. Sonic Mania is a love letter to classic Sonic. I never had any emotional attachment to Sonic growing up. I think the first Sonic game that I've ever played was actually Sonic Mania. And and it's a, it's a good one. Just to just a good one of those. Oh boy, isn't she a beaut. Now, out of all the bosses in the game, which one could I possibly decide to talk about? Chemical Plant Zone 2. Ah! I am not joking. That is my favorite boss from this game. But why? I hear you asking. Well, it's because it's such a shocking change from what Sonic is, while also being a pretty cool reference to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Imagine this. You're playing Sonic, Super Sonic Racing, try to keep your feet right on the ground. But then, you've completely changed game genre and are now playing a puzzle game. I really like that, not to mention I really like Puyo Puyo. A close second would be Stardust Speedway Zone 2 because of Metal Sonic, he's a cool dude and is my friend. Honey Pop's final boss is my virginity. <laughs> Enter the Gungeon is a masterful roguelike that has been flavored with a gun. You traverse the Gungeon, clearing out rooms, collecting items, and at the end of each chamber, fight a boss. This game has a ton of bosses, but I will just talk about the ones from the main five chambers. The bosses range from, I can do this perfectly with my starting weapon, get good loser, to, ah! But how will I know how to beat all those bosses? Welcome to Professor Bill's guide on how to brutally murder all of the Enter the Gungeon bosses. I'm going to rapid fire through all the bosses, so you better take notes. Rapid fire. Gun. Gungeon. First chamber, Bullet King. He, he's in a chair, just circle around him. Gatling Gall. If his boss chamber has pillars, use them to block his shots. Otherwise, just circle around him. When he does his missile attack, that's your chance to wail on him. Trigger Twins. Try to get them both on low health before you finish one off. That way, the other one will be easier. 
Chamber 2, the Beholster. Try to stay on either the left or right side of him. Gorgon, try to stay below her. Coax her up when she goes underwater. Amokanda, attack these orbs when they show up and pray to God. Third Chamber, Mind Flare. Pray to Cthulhu, Cannonball Rock. Your best chance of hitting him is when he's standing still, which doesn't happen often, so use weapons that bounces off the walls. Treadnought. You can use the pillars as cover, but he will destroy them, so you have to keep ahead of him. Fourth chamber. Kill pillars. There's four of them, so use weapons that hit multiple enemies. Wallmonger. Try not to stay too close to him, which is easier said than done. High Priest. You will never see him. I'm not kidding. I have, like... 150 hours in the game, and I think I've seen him maybe three or four times in an actual run. Chamber 5, the High Dragon. There is only one way I've ever beaten him. Seduction. The escapist's final boss is my inability to stop committing crimes. <sighs> now get out! Uh, what? Get out! So we just entered the gungeon, why don't we go ahead and just get out of it? Exit the Gungeon is the sequel to Enter the Gungeon, changing from a top-down roguelike to a 2D shooter with predetermined paths, but it still has bosses and they are all easy. Now, I don't know if it's because I played a lot of the first game, or something with the game itself, but the game is easy and the bosses are easy. Now, I'm not a person who thinks that games have to be super challenging or adding a difficulty selection will ruin the experience the designers crafted, but the first game was hard. Like, really hard. It took me such a long time for me to beat the game once, and in the second game, I played for 21 hours and have beaten the game with every character and have beaten every boss 5 times. The bosses are good though, it's just too easy, especially considering the difficulty of the first game. Doki Doki Literature Club's final boss is Monica deleting System 32.